Hey everyone, it's me, Rami Marks, your Tangled Yogi out here in Northern California. Welcome to the Stellar Acorn class. I'm so excited to bring this class to you. Let's go ahead and talk about the things that we're going to be using for class. I'm going to be working with a Micron PN pen, graphite pencil, white gel pen. I'm going to be working with the Signo Uniball one. This is a great one. And then I'm also going to be working with the Genesis tile at tangledyogi.com. You can go to my shop and pick these up. These are wonderful tiles with super smooth paper that are really great for receiving color pencil. Now if you don't have the tiles, you can always make a square in your sketch pad uh, and make it four and a half by four and a half or use some really nice super smooth cardstock. So with that said, let's get started with the Stellar Acorn. So let's begin here the regular old-fashioned Zentangle way. I've got my graphite pencil in my hand here and I'm going to start by creating our borders for our piece. So you can see that I'm going to start by bringing my dots into my corners here and then I'm going to go ahead and start to connect my borders and you might find that you have a little wiggle or wobble in your line today and just allow that to be there. There's no reason to be perfectionistic about it. Things that are made by hand are made by heart. So really just enjoying the process and having fun. So you can see I've got my border and we're going to start to build off of that in just a minute and we're going to do that by building a string with a tangle and I'll show you what I mean. But for right now just do your border and then when we come back we'll start to build. So we're going to be building this really beautiful star-like shape and it's going to be the string for our class. So to build this shape, what I'm going to do is I'm going to start in what I think is the middle here and I'm just eyeballing this out. I'm going to start by creating a line that's going right down the center and you'll notice that I'm leaving space up at the top about um, three quarters of an inch and three quarters of an inch here. I'm going to turn my tile and I'm going to do the same thing again. So I'm going to come away from the border about three quarters of an inch and just start to have this really nice kind of plus sign that's right in the middle. Now I'm going to use these edges to help me determine the uh, pieces that are going to go diagonally. So I'm lining up here in the middle with those and just going through. Remember, this is our string and I'm doing this in pencil, as you can see. And then I'm going to come over to the other side, lining it up with these two. And what we have is this really nice, almost star-like shape. And I'm going to bring that out just a little bit so that it lines up. So go ahead and do yours. And then when we come back, we're going to start to build some more. So in order to build this star, what I'm going to do is I'm going to look at each little slice here. They're almost like little slices of pizza. And I'm going to come to the halfway point on these little slices of pizza and I'm going to make a little dot. And you're going to see me go all the way around at the halfway point and make these dots. And you'll notice that it starts to look like a circle. Once I have my dots all lined up in the center of each pizza slice, I'm going to go ahead and connect my dots. So I'm going to turn my tile and connect, turn my tile and connect, turning and connecting. This one's a little bit wonky, but I'll still go with it just to show that even if you have a wonky star, this is going to come out just fine. So you can see there's my star all ready to go. Okay, so go ahead and finish up yours. I'm going to finish up mine and when we come back, we're going to add our uh, elements of where we're going to put our tangles inside the star. 
So you can see that I've got my star here. And remember those dots that we were working with earlier? Let's go ahead and zoom in on this. So I'm going to come into these areas right in here, and I'm going to connect to center. So all of my little uh, dots are going to connect to the center. So you can still see that I'm working with pencil here, and I'm just going to go now to my next dot and connect to center. Turning the tile, look for the dot, connect to center. Let's make sure that this stays focused for you. Turning my tile, and connect to center. Turning my tile, connect to center. Turning, connecting, turning, and connecting. So you can see now all of my dots are connected to center. Now normally in Zentangle we don't really use a uh, eraser and I'm not using the eraser because I don't like something I'm actually using the eraser so that I can actually put something in the area. So you can see that these have created little diamonds. Can everybody see those diamonds that I have here? So I'm just going to come in with an eraser and just erase the line that's in the center of the diamond because that is where we are going to work inside of the piece. So you can see that I'm going to go all the way around and just erase out the center line. That was just our guide line for the piece. So go ahead and erase yours out. I'm going to erase mine and when we come back we're going to do just a little bit more with our string here. Okay, so you can see that I've had a chance to erase mine out. I'm going to pick up my Micron PN pen here, and we're going to go ahead and start to ink in my lines here. And the reason for this is because we've got our string now where the actual tangle is the string, and everything else is going to be built around it. So you can see that all I'm going to do is just come in and bring that around. Coming around. and just inking that in. So once I have that, I'm going to do an aura inside of the piece here. So what this is going to look like is I'm going to make some dots that are just above where the triangles are, and this is just going to have a way of my pen, uh, it's going to be able to land. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to come down and I'm going to connect to my little dots here. And you know, in Zentangle we always say, when in doubt, aura out, and I find that it's such a, a great element to add in most tangles because it helps to define the space. So you can see that I'm just going around and adding that in just like so. So go ahead and finish up yours. I'm going to finish up mine and then when we come back we're going to start to bring some fun tangles into this. So let's start off nice and easy here. We're going to put in our acorns first and really have just a real easy time of it. So all the acorns are is a just a soft arc. So you're going to see me come into the valleys of the star here. And all I'm doing is doing an arc. And then I'm going to come up almost square-like shape and come down. At the top of the acorn here, and let's make sure that this stays in focus for you guys. Just trying to make sure that that works. There we go. I'm going to come up and I'm going to add almost what looks like an apostrophe to it. So all it is, and you can see that I'm going to try to line them up as best as I can. It's an arc with a square-like top or a hat and an apostrophe. Lining it up, 
come up to the top, give it an apostrophe, looking at where it is, lining it up, square on top, and a little arc. So these are really fun and you can really get into the groove of it. You know, you know what you're doing. It's repetitious in nature, which is really nice, very zen-like. Getting right in there. And it's almost like you're getting into the groove of it. And I love starting out with the acorn because, you know, the acorn is the symbol for the oak. And inside every little acorn is a mighty oak trying to get out. And so we are starting with this mighty little Zen tangle and letting it get out. And aren't those so fun? So go ahead and finish up yours. And then when we come back, we're going to start to add some elements into the inside of the Zen tangle. So many of you know that one of my favorite tangles is a tangle called I Can Too. And it's a beautiful little tangle and it's great for using during the autumn months and this class was inspired by uh, the acorns that are falling in Sonoma County right now. My husband and I were down there just recently trying to escape the smoke up here and the acorns are just everywhere right now. So let's talk about I Can Too. So I Can Too is you have an arc and then an arc that's just a little bit shorter and then you're going to see me go ahead and add two lines right there and then I'm going to come in from the second arc come in wrap around wrap around and then down here I'm just going to come in with a little curly cue and this is going to just line up coming down so really it looks like an oak leaf which is really quite lovely so what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you how we're going to put it into our piece here so let's go ahead and zoom in and I'm going to be working in this one right here now what I'm going to do is I'm going to come in and I'm going to do an arc that's going to touch the side here just like so and then I'm going to do a shorter arc that comes down and touches the side like so. Once I have that, I'm going to go one and two. And then I'm going to come down from the top. One, two, three, and then the one at the bottom is going to get a little swirl. And that's how we're going to put I can too in there. So let's do that again together. Remember, Zentangle is done one stroke at a time, and that's how we're going to do this. So I'm in this next one right here. I'm going to come up, and I'm going to drop into the side. I'm going to come a little shorter and drop into the side. Make my two little pieces. Come down from the top. One, two, three and then make my little pronton or my spiral in there. Let's do it again. Coming in right over here, I'm going to come over and drop down onto the side. This one's going to be shorter, drop down onto the side, one and two, and then dropping down from the top, one, two, three, and then making a pronton. Super fun and super easy. Let's do it again. So I'm coming in, dropping down, touch, coming in, dropping down, touch, and then go ahead and make your two branches. One, two, three, pronton. And you can see that I'm getting this really nice little pattern right there in the center. So I'm just going to keep on turning and rolling. So coming in, drop down, coming in a little shorter, branch or vein if you will, one, two, three, and pronton. Coming in again, dropping into that side, dropping into that side, one and two, one, two, three, pronton turning again. Nice and slow here. Take your time. 
dropping in and touch. This one's shorter, dropping in and touch. One and two. One, two, three, and here we go. Last one. I feel like I'm starting to get the hang of this now. <laughs> one and two. Coming over. One, two, three, pronton. Super fun, and it just was one leaf that make this, made this beautiful little uh, mandala right here in the center. So go ahead and do yours. I'm going to finish up mine, and then when we come back, we're going to add some more tangles. Okay, so we've got our pieces here, and it's really coming out nicely all the way around. I hope you're enjoying it as much as I am. So what we're going to do is we're going to start to work in our corners in order to build the piece here. And to do that, I'm going to go ahead and start to ink in my piece. So you can see that I'm inking this in, and I'm just going to take my time. Remember to breathe and meet the challenge with an open heart and an open mind. So I'm just going around. So what we're going to do is we're going to work with a variation of poke root. And this is a little bit like poke lily as well. And let me let me show you what I'm talking about. So poke root or rather poke leaf, sorry about that, looks like this. So we usually do poke leaf where we have a stem, a frowny face, and then it comes up and makes a leaf-like shape. So that's poke leaf. Now poke lily looks like this. So generally the way that poke lily is done is we start with this kind of nice little V-like shape and then we come up and over and in and then we have the lily uh, in the center and it has a really nice feel to it. I love the poke lily and it's so much fun to um, to play with. The way that we're going to work with it today is we're going to start with actually a corner. So I want you to imagine that this is the corner of my page here. I'm going to turn it on its side and we're going to do some leaves that are going to come up and out and then my poke root or my poke leaf is going to come out to the top. So you're going to see me come up and make that poke leaf shape. Then I'm going to come in and create this kind of poke lily feel by putting the pollinator right in the center. And then we're going to do the leaves by coming in from the corner and in from the corner. Okay, and then finally we're going to just bring this over the top like a little cloud. So it's kind of like poke leaf, kind of like poke lily, and a little bit of an element of a cloud in there. So let's go work on our piece here. So I'm going to come in and I'm going to start by building my leaves. So I'm just going to come in, I'm going to say this is about an inch, maybe an inch and a quarter, and I'm going to create a leaf-like shape. And then in the center, I'm going to come at the halfway point on each leaf. I'm going to create that lily shape and put the pollinator in. And then I'm going to build my cloud. So my cloud is going to go up, over, up, and over. Let's do it again together. So I'm just going to come in right in here, about an inch and a quarter away from the corner here, going to the halfway point on each of these, making my poke root, creating that little flap on it, pollinator goes into the center here, and then I'm going to make my cloud. Coming over, inch and a quarter, dropping in, inch and a quarter, dropping in, halfway point, create that poke leaf shape, 
and then coming in let's go ahead and make the cloud just like so and one more time one and two poke leaf shape and then go ahead and make your pollinator and then the cloud. And you can see there, it really frames out those corners nicely. Go ahead and do yours. I'm going to finish up mine and then when we come back, we're going to add a little bit more to the piece. So another thing that I saw when I was in the Bay Area was beautiful grapes are um, starting to happen in Sonoma. This is called um, crush time in uh, wine country. And so I saw grapes and they really inspired me. So I thought I would add some grapes into the piece here. Now the way that I'm going to add my grapes, many of you are familiar with a really fun tangle called Bronx Cheer. And, you know, uh, usually it's used if you have an oops or tunity in your piece, but we're actually going to make it an element here. And Bronx Cheer, the way that I'm going to do it is I'm going to start by just starting with one and then putting two underneath it and then three and then maybe four. And it just depends on how far you want to go with it. And then I might let it get a little bit smaller and then I'll add a stem to it to make it look like it's grapes. Okay, so the element of Bronx cheer is that you cluster these all together and do them in black, but because we're going to work in color today, I'm not going to put them in black. So I'm going to let those go off to the side here, and I'm just going to start by coming into the area where I want my little Bronx cheer to be. So I'm going to come in right over here, and I'm going to make a little arc that's going to bring those pieces in. So I'm just going to do a little arc, and then I'll start building by doing a circle. So we're doing it backwards, I guess, this way. And you can see that mine's going to probably touch. And that's okay. And I'll come over and do the other side here. So I'm just going to bring these in. And maybe I can get a couple more on there just to get a little grape-like feel. You can see that it's kind of kind of soft, kind of easy. So I'm just going to bring those in. Start with that. There's three. Comes down. And then we'll do it from the other side too. Do your circle. And you can, you know, play with it and make it work for you however best you like. There's a couple there. Bringing those around. This one I have a little bit more room for. Coming over. And you can decide how big or how little you want them to be. Grapes aren't perfect. I don't have to make mine perfect either. Look at, you can see they were wonky, but now they're making a really neat little pattern. So it's just fine if your grapes aren't perfect. Here comes another set right here. It always amazes me with Zentangle. If you just trust the process, it always ends up working out. And look at how fun that is with the berries in there. And they're not perfect berries, they're just berries. 
So berries, grapes, however you see it, those are going to be really fun. So go ahead and finish up yours. I'm going to finish up mine and when we come back we're going to add a couple more elements to the piece. So let's come back into the piece here. I'm going to go ahead and zoom in on my acorns because I wanted to give my acorns a feeling of texture on the top of them. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm just going to start by, I'll use this one since he's nice and big. So I'm just going to go ahead and do some slanted lines going in one direction and then I'll do some slanted lines in the opposite direction and you can see that that gives me the texture that I'm looking for on my acorns. You could do it with X's too if you just wanted to do X's going across the top just like that you could do it that way as well. Just depends on what you're feeling. So you can go and do slants and then go the opposite direction or you can do X's. And it just kind of gives it that really nice acorn feeling. So go ahead and do all of yours and then when we come back we're going to add one more element to the piece. So let's go back out to our flowers that are out on the corners here. So I'm just going to zoom in on those and I'm going to add an element of dots to this and then I'm just going to divide the leaf in half and the leaf in half just like so. I'll turn and do the next one three dots, leaf in half, leaf in half. Last one right here dots, leaf in half, leaf in half. One more right here dots, leaf in half, leaf in half. So go ahead and finish up yours. I'm going to zoom out on mine and we are going to come back and do some color. I'll see you in a minute. Okay so let's start to add some color to this. I'm going to start right in the center and I'm going to pick up a couple of colors that are just going to really give this an opportunity to pop and really get beautiful. So in my hand here I've got magenta which is PC930 and I also have in my hand here the mineral orange which is PC1003. And you want to make sure that your pencils are really well sharpened. I always find that when I have a really good sharp pencil I'm able to really get the detailing that I'm looking for. So we're going to start with our beautiful leaves here and what I'm going to do is I'm going to start by making those leaves look like they are turning because of course you know with the turn it always looks so beautiful all the leaves are gorgeous. So I'm going to start by coming in with just a dusting of that really pretty magenta at the bottom and I'm thinking of the beautiful liquid ambers that we have here in California when they turn they just really make everything so gorgeous. So I'm really starting with this light dusting of the uh, the magenta and then I'm going to come in with some of that mineral orange here and start to dust up at the top and give it a little bit of that look of the turn here. And I'm going to let some of that mineral orange drop down into that red at the bottom I'm going to come back in with some of that magenta and just give it a little bit of a push just to get some depth out of it. So you can see that that's going to be really really beautiful. So I'm going to go all the way around and use that technique on all of those leaves. You go ahead and do yours, I'll do mine and then when we come back we're going to start to add some color into the background. Okay. So now what we're going to do is we're going to start to carry our color. We're going to take some of the colors that we just used and we're going to add a new color in. So I have my mineral orange in my hand here. This is the PC1033 
And I also have the Tuscan Red in my hand. This is PC937. Now, you could substitute the Tuscan Red with Sienna if you wanted to do that, or with Terracotta. Either one of those will be fine. So let's go ahead and focus in on our little acorns here. So you're going to see me come in with my mineral orange here, and I'm just going to dust in on the sides. And you'll notice that I'm going to give a little bit of a light source on the left hand side here. Once I have that light source on the left hand side, I'm going to press a little bit harder with my mineral orange just to get a little bit of depth of color here. And then I'm going to come in and do a little bit of the Tuscan red. Now once I have the Tuscan Red down, I'm going to come back in with some of that mineral orange and blur out the edge of where the Tuscan Red is meeting the mineral orange. Now you might decide that you want to add a little bit of that white pencil to this that I always like to use. This is the Prismacolor PC938 and I'm just going to come into where the lightest point is and just blur out the edges a little bit just to give it a really soft almost pastel feel. And so I'm going to go around and do all of my acorns just like that. You go ahead and do yours, and we'll meet back here and do a little bit more. Okay, so you can see that I've had a chance to go all the way around with that beautiful uh, set of colors there with the mineral orange and the Tuscan red, and I love the way those acorns are starting to look. So I'm going to start to pick up a new color here. And the color that I'm picking up is actually the lime peel green. This is PC1005, and then I've got a darker color that I'm working with. This is the moss green and this is PC1097. Now if you don't have the moss green you could use grass green or marine green. There's a bunch of different colors that you could use. And I'm going to come in and I'm going to bring that in right behind the star here. So I'm going to come in with the green and just start to dust it in really really softly and just get that in there. Now once I have that green in there, I'm going to start to add a little bit of the darker green right in towards the top. So you're going to see me come in and start to dust in that darker green right in towards the top. And just get a little bit of depth and shadow there. Get a little bit of moodiness as it were. Now once I've had a chance to bring some of that in, I'm going to come back in with a little bit of that lime peel green and I'm going to push a little bit just to get a little bit of a blend between that moss green and the lime peel green. I love the pop of the autumn colors next to the green. I just think it really just shoots right off the page there. So I'm going to go all the way around and do all of those triangles just like that. You go ahead and do yours as well. So let's go ahead and carry that same color that we've been working with, the beautiful greens here. And we're going to start to bring it out into these flowers right over in here. So I'm going to start by just going right into the leaves and dusting really, really lightly with that lime peel green. So remember, the lighter that color is, the more contrast you can put in later. So I'm just adding a really nice light green. I'm going to come back into the top and press a little bit harder with that lime peel green again, and a little bit harder at the bottom. And then I'll come in at the top and work my way down and dust in to this area as well with a little bit of that moss green now. This is that darker color that we were working with. So whatever you are using for your darker color. Now I'm going to come in and actually blend out the moss green with a little bit of the lime peel green. 
And then finally I'm going to pick up a little bit of that white and just blur out the edges a little bit. So this is the uh, PC938 that I'm using to do the blending with. So this is PC938 in the Prisma color set. So go ahead and do all of your little leaves on the outside and then when we come back we're going to start to add more into the background. So I was sharing with my students a little bit earlier today that I was down in Sonoma County and it is crush season and crush is where they go in and do the crush of the grapes and so I'm going to do some green grapes here and um, when we were walking through the vineyards down there uh, a lot of the Chardonnay and uh, lighter wines were getting ready to be picked and so I'm going to come in with a little bit of that green in my berries here so going really nice and light with that. And then once I have the berries in, what I'm going to do is I'm going to come in with that moss green and I'm just going to do a little bit of darkness up top and leave some of the lightness on the other pieces. So same thing over here. And I'm going to go around and do my grapes just like that. So I'm going to go in here and here and over here. All right. So you go ahead and do yours. I'm going to do mine. And then when we come back, we're going to add a really nice contrast color into the background. Okay, so I'm going to pick back up that magenta color that we had and I'm also going to pick back up that really nice mineral orange that we were working with and I'm going to start to bring it into the background. I really want to emphasize the idea of autumn in this piece. So I'm going to start by working with a really nicely sharpened up magenta and the reason for that is you want to make sure that um, when you're working with large swaths of color, you're working on the side of your pencil, not on the tip. The tip is really for detail work. You want to hold it on its side for this type of work. So you can see that I'm coming in and I'm working on the side of the pencil and I'm doing just really soft little circles on the side of the pencil. And I'm just going to work in this quadrant right here just to show you what I'm doing and get right in here. So I'm working around the green and the red. And then I'll come up in here as well and add a little bit of it as well in here. Now, once I've got that in there, I'm going to work around this little acorn in here just to get this whole corner done. So I've got this nice soft red in there and let's go ahead and zoom in on that. Now I'm going to let it get a little bold. So I'm going to push a little bit harder and really start to get this really rich red going in here. So you'll notice that this is like a, a beautiful wine color red that I'm using, this magenta. I'm just getting that in there. So I'm giving it a nice shadow around the acorns here. And then I'm going to pick up my uh, white pencil that I was using earlier and I'm going to do a blend between the darker red and that really pretty soft pastel kind of red that's in the background. So I'm getting right in there and I'm going to add just a little bit more of that shadow in here because I want to get a bit of the drama. And you can see that I'm being careful to just keep it inside of the pink here. Really enjoying the way that this is looking. And now I'm going to pick up some of that mineral orange and I'm going to start to dust right on the outside edge here. So 
So really getting into the idea of those fall colors and just dusting right into the outside edge a little bit. And you can come in with a little bit of your white pencil and start to blur those two into each other. And it gives a really dramatic feel. Just love it when you're able to mix those colors together. Isn't that gorgeous? Really painterly. So go ahead and do yours. I'm going to go we'll work all the way around mine. Okay, so I've picked up a gray from my Prisma color set. Normally I work with PC1065, but today I've got PC1063 in my hand. This is the 50% cool gray. Both of those grays will do just fine. And what we're going to do is we're going to take that gray and we're going to bring it into the cloud around the flower that we have here in the corner. So I'm just going to go in very, very softly with the gray and start to bring that in. Just really nice and light. And then once I've got that, I'm going to start to give a shadow behind the flower here. Just to get a little bit of interest on that. And then I'm going to grab some of that white and I'm going to blur out some of my edges. And you can see that I just cleaned off the tip of that white so that it wasn't going to uh, bring any other color in there. So you can see that I'm softly blurring that out. And you can see that that's giving it a really nice, almost slaty kind of feel. I'm going to go all the way around and do that with my flowers. You go ahead and do yours. I'll finish up mine. So let's zoom in on that flower just for a moment here. I'm going to do a couple of things with the flower. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to come in and give just a little bit of shading right around that little flap that the flower has here, just a little bit of gray. And then I'm going to come in with some of that mineral orange again and go very, very lightly with the mineral orange at first. And then at the bottom, I'm going to give it a little press. So we're getting the idea of a calla lily here in the corners. So once again, going very, very lightly and then giving it a little bit of a press and then coming in and dusting a little bit of a shadow into the corner here. So go ahead and finish up your calla lilies and then when we come back we're going to add a little bit more into our star. So I really love the way this one's coming out. Every time I come back and work with uh, a piece over and over again and try something different I'm always amazed at how lovely they come out in their own way. So I'm going to come back in with that gray again and you can see that I've got valleys in that star. And so where those valleys are, I'm going to dip in and put a little bit of gray right in the corners here. And I'm going to go a little bit heavier right down at the bottom. Okay, so I'll show that again and let's go in a little bit closer. So I'm just going to do a little bit of gray very, very lightly in the corners. And then I'm going to press a little bit harder to get a little drama. And you can come in with some of your white and blur out the edges of that gray. And it really gives it almost a steel kind of feel which is so, so lovely. So go ahead and do yours. I'm going to finish up mine. And then when we come back, we're going to work with the acorns. So let's add a little bit of dimension to these acorns here. I still have that gray in my hand. And I'm just going to dust the outside edges right here with a little bit of that gray. You can see that I'm leaving a little bit of white right there in the center. Let's go ahead and make sure that this isn't blurring out on you. 
So I'm going to add a little bit of gray on the outside edges, a little bit of white in the center, and then a little bit of gray here and a little white out on the edge. So it's gray, 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 and a little bit of white in the center. Okay? You can see the difference between these two when we do just that little bit of shading. Have fun with that. So before we get into embellishments here, I'm going to work with the grapes that we have in here. And you can see that I've picked up the Tuscan Red again. And I'm going to just add a little bit of that into the stems. And you'll notice that I'm leaving a little bit of light in the center here. So a little bit of that Tuscan Red, or if you're using Terracotta or Sienna, that works too. So I'm just coming in with a little bit of that darker brown just to get it to pop off the page here and give that a little bit of interest. So go ahead and do yours. I'm going to finish up mine. Now you can always come back in with a little bit of that white and blur the edges of that brown just to keep it a little bit interesting here. So you can see that I'm doing a little bit of blurring here of that brown just to keep it interesting. Okay? So I'm picking back up my pen, my black tangle pen here, and in the center of this piece, I'm going to add a really nice dark center point just to draw your eye in. And then the other thing that I'm going to do is in the corners of all of these stars here, I'm going to do a little dot right in the corners. So you're going to see me go around and add some almost like rivets to it. Working my way around here. And I'll also go back out to the clouds in here and add a little bit more to those clouds. So you're going to see me come back around and redefine those a little bit. That one's a little wonky. Get back in there. Just do some of those really nice, really nice little rivets in there. Now, what I'm going to do is when I pick up my white highlighter pen, I'm going to come into these with a little bit of white highlighter pen too. So I'm just laying down the foundation for what I'm about to do. And this is also a really great time, like you can see right in here, that I've lost the integrity of the line in here with a little bit of that. Uh, color pencil. So you can go back in and start to clean up any lines that really aren't speaking to you and really make them quite lovely and bold again. Just getting right in there and working with those. Now once I've got that all cleaned up and um, where I like it, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to pick up my white pen and I'm going to start to add some highlights into the piece here. So I'm going to go ahead and go to the center first and add a little white dot right into the center and that's just going to kind of capture your eye a little bit. And then I'll come around to these pieces that we put those black dots into and add just a little white dot into the center just to make it interesting. And then I'm going to start to work in the calla lilies as well and give them, or the clouds rather, their white dots. So you can see that I'm working my way around. Really love the way that looks.
and then finally I'm going to start to work with the uh, the acorns here and what this is going to look like is I'm going to come in and add a little bit of a sheen into the acorns and a little dot right on the edge so it's just a little sheen on the dot and it just gives those acorns a little bit of dimension. I'm just working my way around. And you can see that that's really giving them a pop. It's amazing how a little white can add so much to this. Now the other thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to go up into the grapes and in the darkest place of the grapes I'm going to just add a little dot just to give it a little pop. So you'll see me come over here and do the same. So I'll go around and do those as well. Just having some fun. So that when I zoom out, look at how that gives that so much dimension. Really, really fun. There's a lot of nice movement in this piece. I really enjoy it. So go ahead and finish up yours. And then when we come back, we're going to finish up a couple more things. So let's go ahead and add our chop into the piece here. I'm going to go ahead and just hide my chop right here in this corner. And your chop is just your way of saying that you've completed the piece. So I'm going to put my chop in there. And in Zentangle, that's just kind of our acknowledgement that the meditation is over and that we're letting go of a piece. So I'm going to pull in this other piece that I did for the San Rafael group today. And so you can see that just by doing different colors, you get such a completely different feel. This is so um, gemstony and luscious, and this one has a really kind of light feeling to it. So they're both really different in their presentation, but have a lot to offer. So you can always play with the colors and try different things, which is always really fun. So I hope that you've enjoyed the class. If you did, please give us a thumbs up or a nice review. Even better, subscribe to our page and then that way you'll be notified every time I add a class to the page here at Tangled Yogi 333. And if you want, you can come over and join us on our Facebook group. We are at the Tangled Yogi Art Community page on Facebook. All you have to do is answer the questions and I'll let you into the group and you can share your work with our wonderful, supportive community. All of my students share their work there and it's a really fun place to go and hang out while wanting to learn more about Zentangle. Well, that's it for me. I'm Rami Marks, your Tangled Yogi. I look forward to tangling with you in the future. Bye for now.